Hello, everyone. Good evening. Once again, welcome to Words of Pearls. And uh, I'm not even sure. Oh, wait a minute. Here we go again. And I'm not even sure. Here we go. Yeah. Okay. I think I've got it. Yep. I've definitely got it. So <laughs> I, I forgot to double check before I started. But uh, for those of you who know, my name is Florencia Changajita. My YouTube channel is Flow, F L O, Changajita. And uh, if this message applies and you want to share it with someone who's not on Facebook, uh, you can always go to my YouTube channel after I've uploaded it there. Uh, well, two things. So tomorrow evening, I will be doing, so I told you I'm going to be doing weight donation for the next, for every Sunday this month, pretty much. It's Black History Month. Uh, for those of us of the BIPOC population community, for those of us who are Black, we are Black every day, all day. Uh, however, I um, I have, uh, sh uh, well, not by, well, I have a sort of choice, but it was, you know, an, an inclination I had to to do this for this month. And so, Tomorrow evening at 7 p.m., we'll be uh, showcasing, uh, talking to the director from the Morris, Morris Heights Health Center. Center. And uh, she'll be letting us know the services that there are uh, and, you know, issues that we face as people of color, right? So tune into that. So I, I totally forgot to tell you that part, but I'm glad I remember it. Thank you, Lord, for reminding me. Okay, so now, um, you know, I just had a session with the children. We had Children's Day. It was beautiful. And that video will be coming out soon. Now, tonight's uh, Words of Pearls is, I'm, let me read this scripture to you. It's Ephesians 4 verse 29. And so it was one of my meditative scriptures this week. And it says, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying and that it may minister grace to the hearers. Now, you know, when I, uh, as I was meditating on it, let no corrupt like what a corrupt um, communication, what's that? Crooked, uh, fraudulent, uh, double dealing, faithless communication, like that shouldn't be coming out of our mouths. And I thought about that for a long time, honestly. I thought we have wars, we have all kind of manipulation. We have gaslighters, we have manipulators, we have, you know, like everything happening. We don't know who to trust, right? Uh, we, we, even within the laity, uh, you know, we, we it's, 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 it's a world in which there are times when we're not sure who to trust really, but we know that we can always trust God. <laughs> But I've thought about it. And, you know, and as it continued to say, but um, that which is good to, you, to the use of edifying, what is that? The use of illuminating, the use of educating, the use of improving, the use of inspiring, the use of uplifting or improving, uh, I said improving, the lift of, 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 of building up another person. 
So, you know, it's that I, I started to think is what I have to say to anyone, is it uplifting? Is it educative? Is it inspiring? Will it improve anyone's outlook or the situation that they're in? And then it says that it may minister grace to the hearers. Now, as I thought about that, I was like, listen, I'm hearing my own words. So are the words that I'm speaking, do they inspire, encourage, uplift, improve, educate me? You know, I am one that I've said this. It's been a few years now where I said, you know, I said to the Lord, I want to learn something new every day. And believe me, I do. Listen, when I read the word and I can read the same scripture, but get a, a new revelation. I've learned different ways of cooking the same meats or vegetables, uh, different ways of making different juices for my family and myself, right? Or, you know, just I've learned, I've learned from children, I've learned from the youth, I've le learned, learned from young adults, I learned from the elderly. I've just like is 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 such a great God is amazing where we we can literally learn something new every day whether it's information it's how to do something or you know but just to learn something new every day and I say this also um because <laughs> oh man I, I have some pictures I'm not even ready to share them as yet but I went out and yesterday and it was so beautiful. And I took pictures of trees that were bare. They had no leaves on them. Huh. I really am not ready to share. I'm like the revelation, maybe the, well, the Lord had given me this to do for words of pearls, but maybe that I, I wanted to do that so badly uh, because, <laughs> Oh, it was so beautiful. It was so beautiful. It was so beautiful. The thing is, as I said, that is, are you cognizant of, are you hearing what you're saying when you speak? I think that sometimes, and, and I know there are some people who, who like to hear their own voices, but hearing your own voice and listening to what you're saying are two different things. Hearing the sound of your voice and just spewing whatever knowledge you think you have to impart is different than actually listening to what you're saying. Have you ever started to say something and you, you, you're like, no, wait, no, I shouldn't say it that way. Like that's the Holy Spirit just guiding you as to you're hearing what you're saying and now he's bringing you to, 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 to a consciousness of what you're saying or what you're about to say or what you've been saying. Now you need to, 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 to course correct, right? So sometimes you maybe have wanted to give advice to someone and you realize it's not even fitting what the person's going through. Why? Because you weren't listening to them. And why did you spew out your, uh, your, your advice? You weren't listening to yourself. And so that was, that's a part of it. So, and I also was thinking that, you know, I remember when I'd be angry with someone and just spewing venom all over them in essence I was spewing it all over myself as well I I tell you when the Lord gave me that revelation listen this is why I tend to um not saying I haven't gotten angry not saying I haven't said things but I am not as reactive as I used to be and I tend to think you know and also practice counting well I started practicing counting um, when I was not disciplined 
or listening to the voice of the Lord. But now that I do, there are times when I I'll open my mouth ready to say something and he'll be like, shut it. So I'll just be quiet, right? But sometimes we want to say things to people, those people who have hurt us. And when we have the pain within us, when we don't release it, when we don't give it to the Lord, the Bible tells us we ought to cast all. It says all, every, all, A-L-L, -L, all of our cares on the Lord because he first cares for us. Sometimes when we're angry with people, though, we want them to know. We want to um, just let them know. But sometimes you will let there's a scripture in the Bible. It's, an, it's a proverb it, it, uh, where it says that, oh, I'm going to paraphrase because I don't, I, I, I cannot say it verbatim, but it's basically saying, don't tell something to a fool. Don't argue with a fool. Yes, that's it. Don't argue with a fool, right? The reason is <laughs> it's not going to make sense to them. You could try to help let them see your point but they won't see it and sometimes you 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 try to say something to someone like uh what you said hurt me or what you did hurt me and then they blame you for saying for just letting them know that their action may have hurt you or their words may have hurt you so, you know, I've come to the conclusion, listen, you can't hold it in, give it to the Lord so that it doesn't come out at an inopportune time or an inappropriate moment. And so when we give it to the Lord, give him our hurts, give him our pains, we'll then think about and we'll allow, if, if we're hurt, hurts going, if hurts in our heart, hurts what's going to come out of our mouths. If love's in our heart, love's what's going to come out of our mouths. Uh, this is, I, I love people who are very forthright, who are very honest. Um, sometimes you speak to someone, they're not very forthright. You know, they're not honest with you. And you know they're not being honest. And for me, before it used to frustrate me, now I'm like, I'm just, I'm, I get very dismissive. So I'll just dismiss you. I'm, I'm like, okay. It's, you can't force anyone to be honest. You really can't. Um, and, and if a person chooses not to, it's up to us, you and I, whether you're going to allow that in your life. Like we all have choices, right? We all have choices. So my choice is, yeah, I'm just going to dismiss it and you. It doesn't mean that I won't speak to you, but it means I probably just won't address that matter anymore. Or I may like keep you at a distance. <laughs> like We all have ways of coping. Um, you know, we all have to deal with what we have to deal with, how we deal with, but I really try to ask the Lord to help me to deal with, um, you know, the, the, the things that happen to us in life, because it really doesn't make sense to go around with pains and baggages. It's a heavy burden. It's a heavy load. I don't know about you. I don't like carrying loads. I really don't. Don't know about you, but I don't. I like when I go to sleep that I go to sleep. I had my time. There was a time when I used to rehearse things in my head. I'd go over it and I'm like, I'm having conversation with folks. And ah, when you give it to the Lord, though, it's so great. Uh, you go to your bed, you sleep, you wake up and you're rejuvenated and you're refreshed and you're renewed. And then guess what? You can even deal with the same people. Jesus did it. And he will teach us how to. He will teach us how to. So in this month of love, as Hallmark coins it, love you, Ari. I like that. Uh, but I think that we ought to love every single day of our lives. And when we love folks, we can be honest with each other. 
without hurting each other. We can be, and I think we should feel loved enough that we are able to be honest with each other without being judged. I think that might be some of the problems, right? So um, the corrupt communication can come out of our being when we're fractured, when we're carrying around the pain, when we're carrying around the hurts in our hearts. But when we allow God to take the pains and the hurts and the fractures, the bruises and the bumps, the rejection, the the hateful, prideful, condescending, misogynistic words, because this is the society we live in, um, we can give them to the Lord uh, and know that we're all valuable we all matter. It doesn't matter what our ages are. Everyone has something. Totally. I can learn from a baby as I can learn from someone who's a hundred, 120. You know, I can learn from everyone in between. And it is such a beautiful thing. And likewise, you know, we have things to offer as well. And just to know, I mean, even if it's you learning from yourself, like, you know, that's a great thing too. So I I I, I want to ask uh, my question to you would be, um, do you listen to yourself when you speak, and how does it make you feel? If it uplifts you, if it encourages you, if it enlightens you, yeah, then keep doing it because someone else is being illuminated someone else is being educated someone else is ha improving you know something they do you know we can share ideas of how to do things and that helps each and every one of us it can inspire someone else someone else is being inspired someone else is being uplifted so I pray that you know, you go and read that scripture. You can get it from, there are different versions. You can uh, download load the Bible app. You, if you have a Bible, I always say have a Bible. It's always great to have a Bible. And um, just meditate on some of the things. And so that was uh, part of my meditative um, uh, 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 scripture that I had this week. And I, uh, Pray that instead, you know, and I had to ask the Lord, like, have I, you know, did I say anything that was not enlightening, that made someone feel down or discouraged or, um, <clears throat> you know, you know, it, I mean, we live in such a society that so many people are fractured that you never know what can trigger someone. You, um, I tell you what happened, and 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 this 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 got me to to thinking. My daughter was with me for one of the one of one of the happenings, and she wasn't for the other. So I went into this restaurant to buy something for someone, and as I was walking into the restaurant, a gentleman was coming out, and he was holding the door. Now I had on my mask, and so he said he opened the door and he held it open, and so I said thank you. But I said, thank you, just like this. I said, thank you. Now I had on my mask and my, my thick coat. So I don't know if it was muffled, but then he, he after I, I went through, he like slammed the door and he's like, well, thank you. So I said to him, I said, I did say thank you. Did you not hear me? And he goes, oh. So I, I was like, well, Lord, this, this, this portion of my meditation was really like, yeah. And then uh, yesterday, no, Thursday, my daughter and I, we were walking together. We are crossing the street and a gentleman stopped his vehicle to allow us to cross. And so we crossed and he said, um, he said, good evening. Uh, and so I, you know, we both looked back and said, good evening. We have on our masks. Once again, and he goes, well, 
and he screamed on top of his own. And, you know, and to that, being that I was facing that for the second time this week after having this scripture as my meditation. Well, it's I, I read many scriptures, but that was the one that I felt led to meditate on. And I'm not going to lie to you. After he did that, I wanted to say, well, why did you stop? You know, like I do things for people. I allow people to cross. When I see the elderly, when I see those who are older, I see those who are walking with limps or canes or, you know, people who need assistance. If I see uh, children, you know, or those who might be a bit skittish, right? I'll say go, and, and I always make sure nothing's, if it's, if it's a one-way street, fine. If it's a two-way street, I always make sure that they're clear to continue the journey. Just like the other, um, just this week also, there was uh, two older ladies, they wanted to cross and they were asking me permission to cross, but I saw the speeding truck and the car that was in front. I was like, nope, 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 stay, hold your ground. And so, they didn't see it because of the vehicle that was blocking their view. And so after they saw that, they were like, I, I had scrolled the window down and I was like, no, no, no. You know, I was still driving, but I was like, no, no, no. And so they said, thank you. I tell you, that car came by and the truck right behind it. You know, neither one of them could have stopped. So, you know, we have to use wisdom, exercise the wisdom of God. But I say that to say, that when I, even if someone doesn't respond to me, I've held the door open for people going into supermarkets or whatever um, building I'm going into. And there are times when they may have said it under their breath. They may not have. I didn't hear them say anything. I don't turn back to say, well, thank you. Or, you know, no, I, I keep it moving, right? So, you know, that was my thing that, I was like, okay, I'm just going to. So I said to him, I said, we did. I, so I pulled my mask down at that point And I said, we did respond, you know. And then I pulled my mask up and we just kept walking. And my daughter <laughs> was like, it wasn't too happy. But uh, uh, I mean, she didn't fuss about it. She was just like, why do something if you're if that's going to be your response? Which I agree with her. And um, just saying, so we need to really just listen to ourselves speak. And sometimes we can just take a moment to say, like both gentlemen, the one who held the door open for me, he could have said, um, you didn't say thank you. That could have been his, his response to me. You didn't say thank you. And I would have simply responded, but I did, right? But it, the way he acted, you know, it's like, you know. So I just wanted to say, that in this month, the love year month, may our words be love words because Jesus spoke love words. God speaks. Jesus speaks love words. God speaks love words. The Bible tells us it is the loving kindness of God that draws us to him. I know for sure that's what drew me to him. So let us speak words that will strengthen, will improve, will uplift, will inspire, educate, illumine, comfort, and uh, uh, just overall, let someone feel better about themselves because we never know what a person's going through. Um, there are people who they may have gotten bad news for themselves or others in their family. There are people who go through tr throughout the day. You never know what a person's going through. And so something you may say or do can trigger them. And let us be very conscious of what we're saying how we're saying it also is is something that matters as well and sometimes before saying the thing that can drive someone over the edge how about just counting to 10 just shaking your head and some people might need to count backwards from 100 you know I find counting backwards has a way of disarming you. And it gives you time to think about, okay, maybe I shouldn't say what I was about to say. And maybe that's not what the person needs to hear. 
And sometimes we can even ask a person a question because when folks react how they react, clearly they saw that as some kind of rejection in some kind of way. And maybe that has been an issue for them. Not saying, you know, just say it could be anything, but folks go through things. So I might've been on a little bit long today, but this is how I was led and I'm going to truly follow through. So I just want to say, know that you're loved, know that no matter what it is you're going through, God sees and knows. And to know that if you have pain and hurt packed in your heart, give it to him. Don't walk around with it. It becomes heavy. And I tell you what, this is also heart health month. So giving over your problems, giving over your anxieties, your stresses, the pain and the hurts is really beneficial to your heart physically because doctors will tell you that this leads to heart issues. And the didn't the Bible say out of the abundance of the, guard your heart well, for out of it are the issues of life. And so the Bible says, let the peace of God guard your heart. When his peace guards our hearts, our hearts will be healthy. Our hearts won't be unhealthy. They won't be the issues, the physical ailments that causes you to have to see the cardiologist more frequently than you should. So fill your heart with some love words and then share them with someone. The Bible also curiously says, to, to be loved, show yourself lovable. And some folks are going around saying, nobody loves me or people don't show me. However, did you stop to think about what words have you been speaking and how have you been acting towards others? But once you start showing yourself lovable, once you start sharing love, giving love, saying kind words, smiling with folks. And even if they don't smile back, don't take back the smile. It means you never meant it. My grandmother used to say to me, don't do something that you're going to want to take back. Don't give it if you're going to begrudge it. Don't do it if you have to grumble and complain over it. So I would say just genu genuinely give a smile and you'll be surprised to see what comes back to you. You'll get back more than a smile. I guarantee because God has a way of rewarding our actions, rewarding our deeds, rewarding our speech as well. So I pray that this blesses someone. I don't know who it's for, but hey, you know, if it blesses you, I'm glad. And if you think someone else could use it, then, you know, go to my YouTube page. If you've seen it on Facebook and they're on Facebook, like and share, you know, share it. And also when you go to my YouTube page, like and share as well. And we, we say this because I don't get paid for anything. However, my aim really is for someone to be blessed. I, I don't know, but I just hate seeing humanity broken. I'm, we need to live free. We need to live loved. We need to live. It is such a blessing to, to be loved, to have peace and have joy. Don't you want to share that? Mm, I do. So anyway, have yourself a wonderful night and know that I Love you guys. And God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit loves all of us. And remember to tune in tomorrow night at seven. It will be on Facebook. Yeah, I've been doing it on Facebook. I'm thinking that maybe in the month of March, I might start uh, doing the live through uh, YouTube, but we'll see how the Holy Spirit leads. With that being said, have yourself a wonderful evening. Enjoy the rest of the weekend. Get some rest, why don't you? And wake up refreshed, renewed, knowing you are loved so you can go out and share some love. And in this love you are month, you'll just have love going around. Because, you know, I, I, I was just envisioning a utopian society and, and it, it may not be for the entire world, but you can make it definitely within your community. When I say your community, the folks that are within six degrees of separation from you, you can certainly make 
that whole sphere of people have a wonderful love you every month. All righty, have a good night.